What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have the chances of tropical development continuing to increase by the day. We have the Central American Gyre really starting to organize and develop as we continue to speak right here. This is what we have for the, over the last 10 hours. We're continuing to see more and more convection fire up, at least in this part of the Caribbean Sea. So this is all stuff we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on, and as this looks like the last re, a real a chance for development for the hurricane season. And even if this thing doesn't really develop, this thing does look like it's going to be bring a lot of impacts towards Jamaica, towards Cuba, towards Haiti, and potentially towards the Dominican Republic. It's all stuff we need to take a look at. So here's the situation we have for you. Here's the global sea temperatures, as uh, not the global sea temperatures, but rather the seven-day outlook for Hurricane C the NHC right here. We now have a 50% chance of formation in the next seven days. It was at 30% when we reported it on Pat's Path Predictor yesterday. Now it's at 50%. So here's the situation. A broad area of low pressure is likely to form over the southwestern Caribbean Sea in a few days. Gradual development is possible thereafter, and a tropical depression could form late this week while the system drifts northeastward across the western and central portions of the Caribbean Sea. So that's what we have going on, 50% chance of formation in the next seven days, and a lot of this really uh, is rather interesting because in this whole kind of area of interest tagged by the NHC, Jamaica's completely in it, Haiti's in it, Cuba's in it. And they are likely to see some impacts, even if, this, even if this thing doesn't develop, like we said earlier. So the chances continue to go up gradually as time continues to go on. They actually are going up a bit more rapidly, as we've been seeing. I've been talking with Weather Center Nazario, and we continue to see more and more model runs really showing some signs of potential organization and quick development as the, glo as the global sea temperatures are there. Ocean heat content that is there, and the wind shear continues to decrease across much of the Caribbean Sea and allows an open pattern for of about, I'd say, three to four days of development before starting to close off again. So that's what we have going on with the European model at this current point in time. Here's the situation with all of them. We're going to show you the European, the GFS, the CMC, the ICON, and the NAVGEM. All five of the models that we've been using here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel are still calling for tropical development. We'll go ahead and show you that. Here's the European. The European model has not slowed down at all. We're starting to show signs of organization and development as of right here, as starting about roughly three to four days out, and then it starts to really get its act together right, uh, pretty much after that, starting about November 16th or so, and then it becomes a tropical storm about uh, five days from now, according to the, the run of the European that I am showing, and then it kind of just takes its time to organize and develop, moves east of Jamaica, and then it kind of just stalls out in the central Caribbean Sea before moving and kind of swinging back towards Jamaica as a 980 millibar category one hurricane right there. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Even though this, this, this is the same thing that the 12Z from yesterday showed, I don't exactly really like this track, primarily because A, that would require the complete collapse of steering currents right there in order for this thing to even push east further than uh, below the 30 degree north latitude line right there. That's the first thing that's really um, weighing on my mind right there. That's, that's A. And B, just... This, uh, and B, even if it does move that, it, it just the fact that it then moves further to the west after somehow the steering currents re-engage and then this thing impacts Jamaica, yeah, I'm not exactly liking this. The most probable track is likely this thing organizing about right here and then gradually and slowly moving towards Jamaica like that, not whatever the zigzag that the European is forecasting is. But the intensity, though, I definitely could see happening as this is continu uh, continuing to be a trend with the European. This is the second model from the European in a row that's calling for hurricane development. And if it's the European out of all models that is actually going pretty aggressive, that should tell you guys something right there because before, the European was quite conservative. They were saying, hey, maybe something will happen. Then they're like, oh, nothing's really going to happen. And they're like, oh, yeah, they're looking. we're looking at this. We're looking at potential hurricane development now. And this is the second time, at least... 
uh, from the 10 day a uh, 10 day model forecasts that are going out like this that's forecasting this now i want to go ahead and take a look at the conditions because yeah i'm seeing this from the operational european model but i want to see why they're calling for this i want to kind of understand where they're getting this whole hurricane scenario from and we'll to do that we'll show you have to have to show you the wind shear and the moisture component forecasts here is the wind shear at this current point in time as you can see the wind shear continues to decrease at least overall in the next three days or so and then things start to really get its act together especially in the southwestern caribbean as this thing organizes into a tropical storm and this wind shear right here that's pretty much in the western caribbean sea typically that would be very bad for tropical storms as the wind shear would tear it apart however based off of what i'm seeing and based on the fact that the low pressure system is further to the south of that in that low wind sheared environment that might actually help the system develop because what that shear does if it's far enough out is it actually helps it uh, the outflow boundary and it helps the outflow really just get sucked out in there and it really just helps enhance the uh, the circulation really helps enhance the organization and it really helps enhance Enhance the development and strengthening right there and then you start seeing an area of wind shear right here just kind of like this nice little sl uh, slit of shear that kind of just uh, starts to intrude in the caribbean sea right there and then the, the next thing you know you so see all this wind shear just completely collapse and then uh, in the next seven days right there and then as the european system moves through it's an area of low wind shear and there is some shear towards cuba in those areas right there however that's once again m most likely going to help enhance the outflow right there so definitely something to pay attention to as time continues to go on from the european now we're going to go ahead and show you the moisture forecast to kind of give a better understanding of what may be going on the moisture component to all of this is showing about 48 hours out we're starting to see a general area of i'd say neutral between dry and moist right there across much of part much of the western caribbean sea right there and then it really moistens up by about three days out as you can see about uh, about half of the caribbean sea where this thing is expected to organize and develop gets really moist however dry air does start to intrude into the caribbean seas roughly about five days out and then you get some really dry air right after that which is most likely why the european is pushing this further out to see right there before starting to have it come back as the moist pocket right here that is rather surrounded by some dry air really starts to ramp up and reorganize right there so this is definitely something that i'm noticing right here to take continue to keep a look at my my situation with this is that once this thing does organize and develop it has roughly two to three days after that before the dry air really starts to take its toll on it and from that and from then on out it's really going to shut down any opportunities for it to strengthen after about two or three days of the development i'd say my best guess is that this thing's going to organize and develop either wednesday or thursday and then after that would probably be saturday or sunday would be the cutoff for further strengthening right there as this thing continues to stay in the caribbean and kind of try to organize and develop right there so that's what we have going on with the european model at this current point in time if we go ahead and show you the conditions as of right now the conditions are really starting to sh uh, show right here the rest of them rather the global sea temperatures that we are seeing right now is continue to be exceeding 30 degrees celsius or 86 degrees fahrenheit for those of you who live in the united states and puerto rico right now these continue to be record-breaking global sea temperatures across across not just the caribbean but across the whole atlantic ocean you see this whole area of 28 plus degrees celsius really not going anywhere yeah it's likely going to recede going into december maybe a little bit into january but starting about february is when the wa water start to warm up again and then as we go into the spring the waters start warming up even faster and my concern is is that if the 28 plus degree waters do not really recede further to the south than the greater Antilles right here, when springtime comes, we'll start seeing really warm waters all over, all across the board over here, and we will really start to see like maybe an even worse area of 30 degrees Celsius waters, or in some areas maybe even exceeding that around 32 degrees Celsius or about 90 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States. Kind of like what we saw in Florida this year, where we had areas across the Keys cracking 100 degrees Fahrenheit or about 38 degrees Celsius, which that is an insane reading right there from what when we reported it in July. That was pretty insane. And my concern is going into 2024, 
that happens again and maybe gets even worse across parts of the Caribbean and and see in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's something that really worries me because if we go ahead and show you the ocean heat content, it's still at a very record high value. The OHC is most likely going to recede quite a bit, probably maxing out about maybe 100, maybe 80 at the, at the least. But that's the problem right there because as the water continues to rise, uh, water temperatures continue to rise in the spring, so does the ocean heat content. So does the depth of the water right there. And my concern going really into all of this. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really concerning me for 2024 but as of right now the global sea temperatures and the ocean heat content are absolutely perfect for this kind of tropical development this one last hurrah of tropical development right there and that's particularly concerning to me because i've we've all seen what happened with adalia we've all seen what happened with lee we've all seen what happened with a bunch of these systems that have just the perfect conditions for a few days and organize and strengthen uh, strengthen as according to uh, what happens with the conditions. So, yeah, that's what we have going on with the conditions right now. We'll show you a couple more models. We'll show you the GFS. We'll show you the, C uh, the CMC, and then kind of call it a day right there. The GFS continues to be the GFS. It's showing signs of organization and development and rather quick strengthening as this thing becomes a rather disorganized Category 1 hurricane as it brings impacts to Jamaica and then makes landfall in Haiti, which we've talked about the last two videos, is the absolute worst place for a hurricane to make landfall in. Hell, even a, a tropical storm would uh, be the worst case scenario for Haiti because of the poor infrastructure, the mountainous terrain, and the fact that they have no real government at uh, anywhere in Haiti at this current point in time, and they haven't had one since 2021. So that's another concern right there if based off of what I'm seeing if this thing does run out. And now we're going to go ahead and show you the CMC model. This is what we have from the latest as of the 12Z right here, showing signs of organization and development and quick strengthening rather into tropical storm strength as it approaches Jamaica, bringing some gusty winds and heavy rainfall as this thing becomes a rather large yet disorganized tropical storm as time continues to go on. Then it makes land uh, kind of just meanders near Haiti and the Dominican Republic right there and kind of just kind of does this a loop-de-loop -loop similar to the European before approaching Cuba as either a weak tropical storm or a tropical depression. But either way, this is still a very big problem and still a very serious situation we need to keep an eye on because now the chances are starting to increase faster and faster according to the NHC. And now the models are continuing to be rather consistent and show rather just disturbing trends in the mo in the model runs. Basically, we're seeing a bunch of these models that are popping out potential hurricane scenarios in Jamaica and Haiti, which is the absolute worst thing that we need to, uh, right now. And we'll have to keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel as more information continues to come out. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.